Now, when you award a contract to a supplier, okay, or pretty much anyone, because you want to get something done, maybe you <clears throat> want to have a website developed for you, or anything, okay, supply material, whatever it is, fix electricity. How do you know that they are doing a good job? Now, you can say, I'll just wait and see the results, but sometimes you don't have the luxury to do that. Sometimes, if there is a mistake, you want to identify it as quickly and fix it, especially if it is one of those long-term things, okay? So, this is where key performance indicators come in. I mean, what are they? How do they work? All that stuff, right? So, in this video, you will be in a position to understand what key performance indicators are. You're also going to look at um, the sort of questions that can be asked in exams relating to these, okay? So, let's start by, first of all, just understanding what are key performance indicators or KPIs. KPIs are clear, qualitative, or quantitative statements which define adequate or desired performance in key areas. So, for example, if you are, you know, you're dealing with suppliers, so the question of delivery can be important, which means you could keep data on how they're delivering goods. And speaking of deliveries, KPI in this case can be something like on-time delivery rate. But then the question will still remain, okay, well, how do we measure on-time delivery rate, okay? And that will mean uh, the percentage of orders that a supplier delivers on or before the agreed upon date. So in this case, that's what we are going for. On-time delivery, like you need to know if that supplier has delivered something on time. So we are looking at it from a percentage point of view. For example, the formula, so in this case, on-time delivery rate is equals to number of on-time deliveries divided by total number of deliveries times 100. But that will give you a percentage, right? So it could be anything, 5%, 20%, 90%. We need a target because you're going to measure that against your target. So you can say, okay, and these are things you design before you even award the contract to the supplier. So you're saying, in terms of delivery, we expect 95% delivery rate. So that becomes your target, which means if you calculate, if you look at their delivery, maybe it's 80%, and then you say, well, that one doesn't meet our standards. Our standards are 95. Let's take a practical example. So assuming the data, okay, is the total number of deliveries uh, in a month is 100. Uh, the number of on-time deliveries in the same month is 92. Then on-time delivery rate is 92 divided by 100 times 100, and that gives you 92%. But remember, okay, from the example, our target here was the delivery rate should be 95%. So uh, the point I'm just trying to help you understand KPI, okay? So this is not like a math lesson. It's not maths. So you figure out that their delivery rate is 92%. Your target is 95%. So what do you do? Now, because the KPI has shown you what the supplier is either achieving or missing in this case, then you can identify reasons for the delays, okay? Work with the supplier to address such reasons or find alternative suppliers. So you understand what KPI is. And the question is, what sort of questions can they ask you in this case? And now, Based on the definition, okay, the sort of questions that can ask will include things like, in this case, which of the following best describes a KPI in procurement? So they just want you to figure out of the following choices, which one gives you the best definition or description. So you can say a KPI is a qualitative measure of supplier relationship, is it? Um, it's a quantifiable metric used to evaluate procurement performance. Okay. A theoretical framework for procurement strategies. Not really. A financial statement detailing. Okay, look. It's a quantifiable metric used to evaluate procurement performance. That makes more sense. For example, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, example, we talked about delivery rate. Okay. So 95%. That's what you're going for. Quantifiable. Another question. Which of the following options, okay, present two key performance indicators that could be used in a contract with a supplier. Well, is it pricing stability, on-time delivery rate? Is it employee satisfaction, market share growth? Is it brand awareness, customer retention, product quality, social? So in this case, price stability and on-time delivery rate seems to make more sense compared to the other three. So we'll go with that one. Again, look, the question is, 
do you know what a KPI is? Yes, I do know. Okay, can you point out two examples of KPIs that can be used where used in procurement? Because you can just say KPIs that can be used in testing customer satisfaction. And then you have things like, you know, <clears throat> the red scores and things of that nature. Employee satisfaction. So sometimes the thing of KPI, the thing with KPI is, yes, you know what it is, but do you know where it can be applied? That's another one. Okay, that's another way they can test. Of course, you can also use examples, which later, in a later video, we'll see that. So subscribe, okay? In a later video, we'll be talking about exam specific examples of KPIs and how they can be used, whatever. But for now, just the basics. What is it? Okay. Um, an another question in this case, which KPI is commonly used to measure the effectiveness of procurement process? Effectiveness of procurement process. Return on investment. <laughs> that's effectiveness of investment. Inventory turnover. Well, that's just inventory. Purchase order cycle time. Makes sense in procurement, okay? Like, when did you order to when do you really get whatever you... Web... No, no, no. Web traffic. So, the answer is C. Okay? So, these are some of the, you know, some of the examples or some of the questions that uh, they can ask as far as the KPI thing is concerned. Now look, that's not the only thing that they can ask, okay? The other things that you also need to know, okay? So let's move on. When you talk about supplier performance measurement, we mean assessing their current performance against defined performance criteria, previous performance, performance of other comparable organizations. And uh, as you're doing that, okay? As you're doing that, as you're trying to figure out the, where the performance of the supplier is, and which KPIs to use. These are the key components of performance management framework. Number one, key performance indicators. Okay, what are we measuring? Or what are you measuring? Targets, that is the performance level to be achieved. Remember in our example, we had one-time delivery rate, that was our KPI, and our target was what? 95%. Okay, so we check, is does it match with that one? And number three, consequences. So, What's going to happen if they fail to meet your target? That is something that you need to figure out. Now, let's talk about benefits of using KPI because that's another thing that they can test, okay? So they can ask you questions revolving around the benefits of KPIs. And uh, the benefits will vary depending on whether you're the supplier or you're the buyer. To the buyer, some of the benefits will include increased and improved communication on performance issues, create a motivation to surpass the specified performance level, supports the collaboration between the buyer and the supplier relations, helps focus on key results, okay, key result areas such as cost reduction and, um, you know, quality improvement, okay, reduces conflict that arises due to poorly defined goals. To a supplier, remember the supplier also has, you know, the, the, the supplier is also interested in KPIs, right? So how do these, how do KPIs benefit a supplier? Now, to a supplier, the benefits will include things like setting clear performance criteria and expectations, managing supplier risks, supporting contract management to ensure that agreed benefits are obtained, okay, providing feedback for learning and continuous improvement in the buyer-supplier relationship. Now, you look at something like that, okay, clearly it's, it's nice, it's interesting, but it has setbacks. <laughs> there is a problem also associated with KPIs. And uh, in this case, we are saying that the problems or the setbacks could include things like cutting corners in quality so as to achieve productivity or focusing on results, okay? Focusing on results at the expense of relation because that is something you can do. They want us to deliver faster because they have a 95% on rate, okay? On time delivery rate. So let's just deliver. And then you end up delivering things that are probably not up to standard or whatever it is. So the point is, look, just because you want to measure something, remember, there is also the qualitative approach to KPI. So it's not just quantitative, it's also qualitative. As long as you know how to define or how you're going to measure the qualitative, because otherwise you can't say, you want the delivery to be nice, or you want the goods to be nice. What exactly do you mean by nice? So from an exam perspective, okay, the questions can revolve around what is KPI, what are the benefits either to the supplier or to the buyer, okay? You know, they can also test your ability to just look at one and point out whether, you know, that thing is, um, is it 
uh, you know, like, uh, is it a KPI or, or it's not? Is it good to a buyer? Is it something that you can use in procurement? Is it something that you use in employee? Whatever it is, okay, whatever area. So, you know, most of the questions will revolve around that. Now, look, KPIs go hand in hand with the uh, specifications. So if you don't understand specifications, that's, that's also going to be challenging. Now, here's a video that's going to help you to look at specifications as well as the questions that can be asked in relation to specifications. So check that one out. And uh, yep, see you in the next video.